Game Ranks presents 10 things you need to know about Dark Souls 3. The next game in that beloved masochistic series is releasing soon and we know a lot of you guys are excited about so here are 10 things you absolutely need to know going in because going in unprepared to a Souls game is stupid. So let's get started off with number 10. Players should know that in Dark Souls 3 you'll be able to use fast travel from the very beginning of the game. This was actually a feature in Dark Souls 2, but fans weren't sure if it would return and go back to a Dark Souls 1 or Demon Souls kind of structure. Fortunately, game director Miyazaki said the team wants to keep the convenience aspect from the previous titles intact, unless they interfere with the game design. That's really funny to hear Miyazaki talk about convenience, seeing as how these games are basically built around inconveniencing and abusing you. Despite that though, I think the fast travel option is a welcome return. And at number 9, players should really know that while it's not directly a Dark Souls 3 related thing, or even a video game, it's worth noting that there is a series of comic books from Titan Comics releasing in April. These comics are simply titled Dark Souls, and these will tell stories set in the Souls universe and expand upon the lore. So if you're one of those admittedly few people that are way into Dark Souls lore, this should be right up your alley. Many people, and even From Software themselves, kind of criticize the incoherency to these games, and how it's just always kind of like a jumbled labyrinth of lore. So if you're really curious, maybe some of these comic books will clear things up. And at number 8, you should probably know that although it was developed by a different team other than Bloodborne, the limits of Bloodborne actually directly influenced the combat of Dark Souls 3. Judging by the general reception of Bloodborne, this should excite you. Miyazaki has been on record saying that, and I quote, because of the character of Bloodborne's gameplay, its battle style, as well as the role-playing elements, it's limited compared to the Dark Souls franchise. It doesn't necessarily mean Bloodborne was bad, however, while working on it, I realized I wanted to create something that has a wide range of battle styles or features magic, or those things which allow players to wear awesome armor. Those elements are what actually made me come back to the Dark Souls franchise. And I guess that totally makes sense, and it makes sense for players coming back to Dark Dark Souls. Bloodborne is great, it plays great, and now it's influencing the Dark Souls series, but ultimately we want big swords, shields, and we want to fight dragons and skeletons. The brief detour into Victorian horror was awesome and great, but we're happy to get back to a more fantasy setting, and it seems like the creators are too. And at number 7, game director Miyazaki confirmed that while the sole vessel consumable item from Dark Souls 2 may not be in the game, there will definitely be a method for players to respec completely and be able to reallocate their stat points to play around with different build types. This is of course without having to go back and make a whole new character and go through the whole process and grind of playing Souls all over again. So for many of you RPG fans that do like to fiddle around with how your character exactly plays, this should be comforting to you, especially in a game that is not known for being comforting. And at number 6, you need to know that New Game Plus mode is returning, but will be a bit different this time around. While the way a New Game Plus playthrough is handled is almost identical to that of Dark Souls 2, a big change is that bonfire aesthetics are no longer a thing. In previous games, you can burn those aesthetics and raise the difficulty of that zone to the next level, meaning standard playthrough would raise it to the level of a first New Game Plus. This all makes farming souls that much easier. So now you need to be aware that this strategy is no longer valid in Dark Souls 3. So you better plan accordingly if that's how you were thinking of playing this time. And at number 5, Dark Souls 3 is set to give players an expanded arsenal of magic for their nightmare journey. While the game's pre-existing magical abilities will be pretty much intact, you know, for example, your pyromancer can still shoot fireballs like a boss, From Software is actually working to make spells develop and differentiate from each other as you build up your character. In an interview with Game Informer, Miyazaki actually said, and I quote, We will make sure that they are not just the same type of spells with different attributes, but actually have specific characteristics that can enhance the player's play styles and strategies. Players will be able to have more criteria to accurately choose the different types of spells to best fit their tactics and strategies. This is similar to the thinking behind the characterization of each weapon and their specific battle arts. Magic is basically undergoing a big change which brings us to number 4. How much and how specifically you actually use magic is going to change as well. In the game's past, magic usage was limited by your number of available charges. If you use them, those charges would refresh whenever you sit at a bonfire. In Dark Souls 3, you get a more traditional MP or magic points bar, much similar and reflecting the similar style of the old Demon Souls. Miyazaki said that by changing the magic management system to an MP bar based scheme, options and freedom of utilization should increase. From Software did this to better clarify the differences in managing items and magic, and it totally makes sense if you ask me. And at number 3, let's talk about weapons. For weapon upgrades, Dark Souls 3 adds a new item called the Farron Ember. You can bring this to the blacksmith to access the upgrade paths for Sharp, Harden, and Poison. While they haven't fully fleshed out the details on it yet, we're guessing that Sharp and Harden are most likely like Sharp and Crushing Damage from Demon Souls, increasing Dexterity and Strength Scaling respectively, which is pretty interesting. 
And at number two, although it's often been speculated, it turns out that Dark Souls 3 will not be using a system like Bloodborne's bells for summoning in multiplayer, and will have a more standard summoning system just like Dark Souls 1 and 2. It'll use your soul level for matchmaking rather than just your soul memory. If you've never played a Souls game before, it probably sounds like I'm speaking another language, but don't worry. Things are gonna be a little different and easier than Bloodborne. It's also worth noting that for invasions, players won't be locked down by consumable items, and they'll be able to do it as they please instead of using cracked red orbs. Multiplayer ease of use is always been a bit of a thorn in From Software's side, especially with Bloodborne, so maybe these tweaks will clean up the experience a little bit. And at number one, let's acknowledge weapon durability. There are some tweaks to durability in Dark Souls 3. Durability in the previous two games have been criticized for either being way too generous or way too punishing. And thankfully, game director Miyazaki has said that this game will find a happy medium somewhere in between. Miyazaki has said that they are hoping to find a good balance for Dark Souls 3, and honestly, thank God. Weapon degradation is a pain in many people's asses in many video games, and it will be really great for Dark Souls 3 to really get it right. So guys, those are 10 things you need to know about Dark Souls 3 before going in. The game is releasing soon, and we want to talk about it down in the comments below. Do you agree with some of the changes made to the core formula of this game? It's a very particular style of game design, and the littlest tweaks can make so many things go haywire, so we want to know what you particular fans are feeling this time around. Let us know anything you want about Dark Souls 3 in the comments below, and if you like Dark Souls videos, clicking the like button lets us know and lets us do more. Subscribing is a good idea too, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll See you guys next time.